question number 10 says a large grinding wheel in the shape of a solid cylinder has a radius of 0 0.33 meters is free to rotate on a frictionless vertical axle a constant tangential force of 230 newtons applied to its edge causes the wheel to have an angular acceleration of 0.872 radians per second squared a what is the moment of inertia of the wheel B. What is the mass of the wheel? And C. If the wheel starts from rest, what is its angular velocity after 4.3 seconds have elapsed, assuming the force is acting during that time? Okay, so this is one where when you start investigating it, you realize that you have to do A um, after you do B. And the reason is, is it asks what is the moment of inertia. And so um, typically the moment of inertia equals the mass times the radius squared. But this is only when your everything in between your axis and your object have a negligible mass. So mass roughly equals zero here and mass here is greater than zero and so this is a solid cylinder is what the question says and so for this kind of problem your moment of inertia does not exactly equal the mass times radius squared in fact you have to look in the textbook on table 8.1 table 8.1 has uh, six different shapes where the moment of inertia formula is different and so for a solid cylinder the moment of inertia equals one half of the mass times the radius squared well here's the problem with that we don't know what the mass is and so in order to figure out the moment of inertia we first have to figure out the mass so in order to figure out what the mass is, we're going to use some equations uh, where we can equate force with torque, and we can equate torque with the moment of inertia. And so here's, what, here's basically what it means. The torque of something is equal to the force times the radius. But the torque is also equal to well, actually, let's break down um, what, what torque is really quick. So torque is equal to the mass times the acceleration times the radius. And we can actually substitute the acceleration because we know whenever we have a rotational problem that the acceleration is equal to the radius times the angular acceleration. And so we can actually take this and plug it in for A so we get that the torque equals the mass times the times r times r times the angular acceleration so the torque is equal to the mass times r squared times the angular and i, I wrote times the angular acceleration so now we can actually substitute in our our equation for torque so what torque actually equals, we can substitute that in right there, and we can get that the force times the radius is equal to the mass times the radius squared times the angular acceleration. And here's the thing, we know what the radius is, we know what the force is, and we know what the angular acceleration is. So now we can solve for mass. And so I'm going to set that up. So our force was 230 newtons, and our radius was 0 0.33 meters and so this is going to be equal to the mass times the radius squared so times 0 0.33 squared times the angular acceleration which was 0 0.872 radians per second squared and so then we just have to simplify all of this over here we get 75 point 9 equals mass times uh, 0 0.0949608 so we'll just divide this on both sides and we'll get 75.9 over 0 0.0949608 
equals m equals and actually um, there is one correction to this and because uh, like I said in table in table 8 uh, table 8.1 whenever the mass of the thing is solid all the way through we actually have to times this whole answer by one half and so what ultimately that means is that I'm going to times this by one half so that's a parenthesis around my one half there and then that will be my answer and I, I don't know what times this by two so uh, if this was times by one half we'd have to multiply by two on both sides to get the correct answer and so we get that the mass equals 1598.55 and so I feel like I was just a bit confusing there and and that's it's my fault so that what our equation actually ends up being is that the force times the radius equals one half times the mass times r squared times the angular acceleration and this one half is only here because the object is a solid cylinder all the way through this whole inside is filled with stuff if it was not filled with anything if this was just like a hula hoop going around the outside we would just have that the force times the radius equals the mass times radius squared times angular acceleration and so for any odd shaped object such as a solid cylinder a long rod a solid sphere a shell of a sphere and a long thin rod um, you want to use table 8.1 to adjust this formula right here where F times R equals torque so you could say that torque equals M times R squared times angular acceleration and so you this this is your core formula but you want to adjust it when you have any odd geometric shapes so that gets us back this is the answer for part B and uh, we're going to take that and so we, we need to define what I is I is anything in this half of the equation except for angular acceleration so in this case I equals one half M times R squared we know what M is now it's 1598.55 so we times that by one half so one half times uh, 15, 1598 times r squared and r is 0 0.33 and we're going to square that and so that is our inertia that is our moment of inertia that ends up equaling 87.04 and then the last part of the question says if the wheel starts from rest what is its angular velocity after 4.3 seconds have elapsed and so that's a simple um, the angular speed the final angular speed equals the initial angular speed plus the angular acceleration times the change of time where this equals zero so now we just have to plug in that the final the final angular speed is equal to 0 0.872 times 4.3 three seconds so that gives you an answer of three point seven four nine six radians per second